Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about thyroid nodules. And actually, more specifically, we're going to be talking about how to treat thyroid nodules. We're going to be talking about natural treatments, and we're going to be talking about treatments with some medications. We'll be talking about those as we go, um, and we'll jump in in just a second. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in treating people with thyroid problems, people with hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. So today's topic is more related to the thyroid, and that is thyroid nodules. So let's get out our whiteboard here so that we can have this discussion. So again, we're going to be talking about thyroid nodules treatments. That's what that TX stands for. It's just abbreviation for treatment. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe and the notification bell, especially if you have thyroid problems, because we're going to be talking a lot about stuff like that. And I think you'll like the information to come. So let's talk about thyroid nodules for a second. Why do we care about thyroid nodules? Well, a huge percentage of people have these things, okay? And I, when I say huge, I mean actually huge. So for instance, it's, it's estimated that something like 40% of women who are age 40 have a thyroid nodule. Okay, four zero, 40%. That's a huge, massive amount, of, a massive number. And why do we care that that many people have them? Well, because thyroid nodules, what, what comes out of thyroid nodules is what scares us, and that is the potential for thyroid cancer. Okay, so if you have a thyroid nodule, that means something is disordered in your thyroid gland, and we need to try and treat that. Because there is a small risk that whatever that nodule is, regardless of the size and its characteristics, it might be cancerous. Now, I have a video on how to tell if your, if your nodule is cancerous, so I would suggest you watch that. We're not going to be focusing on that aspect. We're going to be focusing on what to do if you have one today. But let me put your mind at ease and, and let you know that something like 95% of all thyroid nodules are benign. Okay, So most thyroid nodules are not cancerous, but it's still within your best interest to try and treat them if you have them because, again, it can turn into it, so why increase your risk if you don't have to? So we're going to talk about six different things, and I'll lift this up so you guys can see all these things as we go, um, but six different things and areas that you want to focus on if you want to treat your thyroid. Um, now, there are, there are within each of these subcategories, some are natural treatments and some are medications, and I'll mention those sort of as we go. But the first thing you want to understand is you need to be able to manage your TSH. Okay, so TSH management. Now, many of you already know what TSH is. It's a hormone secreted from the pituitary. I have a little drawing up here. That's what that P means. Uh, the pituitary secretes the T TSH, and then TSH acts on your thyroid gland, which is here, and then your body produces thyroid hormone. Okay, so why is this relevant to us? Well, TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay, what does that mean? I mean, you can infer from the name, but it stimulates your thyroid gland. Okay, it stimulates it to grow, to pump out um, thyroid hormones. And the way that this, this uh, TSH works, this hormone works, is that it just tells your thyroid to do one thing, and that's do whatever it does a lot better. Okay, so as TSH levels are high, you can imagine if you have a nodule, let's say a nodule right here, you don't really want TSH coming on that nodule and saying, grow, 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 right? Like that's not, that's not going to do any good to, your, to that nodule. It's actually going to make it bigger. So the treatment here is to manage TSH, but to not only manage it, but to keep it in a normal and healthy level. Okay, so the level that you're going to want to be looking for, in my opinion, is 0.5 to 1.0. Now, what you will find is that this is much lower. Well, this is probably more reflective of a, a healthy a TSH of healthy individuals and healthy adults. So I just want to point that out right away. But your doctor is probably going to keep you, or at least many people who have hypothyroidism are kept at a TSH somewhere between 1.0 and 2.5. Okay, and that's that's kind of if you're lucky. All right, M many doctors don't even think TSH is a problem unless it's greater than five. But if you can you can imagine that I'm telling you a TSH from 0.5 to 1.0 is ideal. And some doctors will tell you that they want that TSH, they don't care if that TSH is greater than five. That, that's a big discrepancy between the TSH levels among what doctors think um, and so on. So if you have a thyroid nodule, try and keep it in this optimal range for the reasons I just mentioned. Um, if your TSH goes too high, then it's going to stimulate that nodule to grow more potentially. And you definitely don't want that because the more this nodule is growing, which is disordered tissue, uh, the more likely it is to become cancerous over time, the bigger it gets. And you know, just the, the more cellular pro proliferation there, that will be a problem for you long term. So you want to keep that TSH low. The question is, how do you do that, right? Many of you have probably already struggled with this. You, you want that TSH. Now, I have videos on that topic, which is you know a completely different topic. But what you should know is that one of the easiest ways to do that is with, guess what? Thyroid medications. Guess what thyroid medications do? They drop your TSH. Now, some of these medications are more effective than others. And what you might have heard, or maybe you have, if not, well, then maybe this is the first time I'm, that you've heard this, is that NDT, which is, that's a class of thyroid medications, which includes armor thyroid and NP thyroid and so on. These medications are particularly effective at dropping the TSH because they contain T3 
and T4. Okay, so that means potentially NDT and other thyroid medications, by the way, if used in the right dose, can drop that TSH and may be a beneficial treatment for thyroid nodules. But more, the reason this is, is occurring is because of their impact on that TSH. They're dropping it down. Other natural therapies can also do this. Um, again, you'll have to look at the other videos that I've talked about. I have entire videos on how to treat your thyroid naturally, and it will help you understand how it impacts TSH and so on. But what I want you to know for now is that TSH management is incredibly important. And when I say TSH, I want that TSH to be in this optimal range, 0.5 to 1.0, pr preferably in that range. Even a little lower probably isn't going to hurt you and maybe be more beneficial. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is iodine management. Okay, so we know that people with high iodine intake and people with low iodine intake, make sure I spelled that right, high iodine intake and low iodine intake both suffer from an increased risk of developing thyroid nodules, okay? So that means you don't want your iodine intake too high and you also don't want it too low. Now, somewhere, it, it, there, there's not really good data that says this is where it should be or this is where it, where it, you know, it shouldn't be, but based off my experience, you probably want it somewhere between 100 micrograms at the low end, this is MCG, let me make sure that's clear, MCG, all the way up to 12 milligrams. So huge dose disparity between these two, but somewhere in between this range um, is ideal. Now, if you have already been taking mega high doses of iodine, maybe even greater than this 10 or 12 uh, milligram range, and you have nodules and they haven't been going away, that might be an indication that your dose is too high to begin with. But on the other end of the spectrum, what if you're someone who hasn't used iodine at all, right? Because there's a lot of bad information out there. It's a very uh, contentious topic. There, every time I talk about it, people get angry. Um, there's just a lot of diff varying opinion, various opinions on this topic. But um, if you haven't been using iodine at all because you're scared of it or whatever, um, then, and you have these nodules, maybe it's time to at least supplement with it. I fall into the camp, and I, I really believe this based off of my experience and all, all the research that I've done, that we do need iodine. Iodine is essential for humans, and so some amount of iodine is ideal. It's finding that dose in between this wide range that can be somewhat difficult for you. But you need that iodine to be managed. Most people, when they're taking too high doses of iodine, it's not the iodine by itself. It's actually other deficiencies which trigger it because high dose, high intake of iodine can actually stimul stimulate inflammation in the thyroid gland, and that's usually the problem. It's not usually the dose itself. It's usually what accompanies that dose, but, but that can be treated. So that's sort of another, another story here. So that's number two. The next one is autoimmune disease management. Okay, and so really what I'm talking about here is Hashimoto's. So let me just write that here. Hashimoto's, um, th well, we'll just try thyroiditis. So most people with hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function, have that thyroid function as the result of an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In fact, that it's, the percentage is so high, somewhere between 70 and 90, I've seen reports even higher, it doesn't really matter. But the, the, what I want you to understand is that many people with low thyroid function have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And why that's important is because Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune disease, which means that you, you're, well, you're not, not you, well, you, but your body is attacking your own thyroid gland. And guess what's happening in that attacking sort of area? A lot of inflammation. So remember, one of the ways that, that your body uh, has disordered cells and disordered tissue, which can stimulate cancer, is a lot of inflammation and a lot of damage. Because if you're damaging cells and they're trying to regrow, you know, they have to fix themselves, they have to repair themselves. All of these incidents are, uh, can increase your risk of that cell not doing the right thing and then becoming, you know, somewhat nodule-esque or somewhat cancerous in the process. So this inflammation and damage that occurs in Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a problem for thyroid nodules. And we know that, like I said before, people who have Hashimoto's have a much higher risk of developing thyroid nodules just throughout their life. So if you haven't already, again, I have videos which help educate you on how to treat that autoimmune component of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Because remember, it's a combination thing. It, it, the Hashimoto's affects your thyroid gland, but it also um, affects your immune system, right? It's an autoimmune disease. So you need to manage this autoimmune component if you want to have, um, if you want to get better, or if you want to potentially reduce the size of your nodule or get rid of them. That's number three. Number four is blood sugar or insulin resistant management. So again, we know that people who have high blood sugar levels tend to get more thyroid nodules, okay? And these thyroid nodules tend to be a little bit higher. We also know these people have a higher risk of cancer just in general, um, presumably because of the inflammatory effect and also insulin is a growth factor. So there's a lot of reasons. You don't need to necessarily know why that occurs, but let me just, just trust me when I say high blood sugar and high insulin resistance leads to an increased risk of developing thyroid nodules. So you need to address that, those thyroid 
you need to address your blood sugar and insulin. And we know that about 50% of people listening to this, at least in the United States, have some element of insulin resistance. It's a huge, huge, huge number. So there's lots of different supplements that you can take to help reduce um, your insulin levels. There's, uh, you can do certain diets, like the ketogenic diet is potentially helpful. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the ketogenic diet for other reasons, but if you have high insulin resistance, it can be effective for that. You can just do low carb diet diets in general. Um, again, the supplements, intermittent fasting, um, high intensity interval training, these are all therapies that can help reduce blood sugar and insulin resistance and therefore potentially help treat your thyroid nodules. Number five is exposure to radiation. Now I've only included this here for, for completeness, um, but most of you probably aren't running around getting irradiated very often. Um, however, I just want you to be aware, if you have a thyroid nodule, you should be very sensitive to any sort of radiation exposure. That means protecting your thyroid gland if you have to get an x-ray or if you're getting dental x-rays and things like that. Um, a lot of the, the technicians who are in charge of x-rays should be aware of this. In fact, your thyroid is one of the most sensitive organs in your body to this type of radiation. Um, and so they will usually give you like a, a little guard here to protect your thyroid gland. But if, if someone hasn't been trained or maybe doesn't know or they're in a rush, they may not do it, okay? So you need to be aware that you need to be protecting your thyroid gland all, at all times, if you can, from radiation exposure. Now, for most of you, that's going to mean, you know, CT scans and x-rays and things like that. Um, but you do get radiation exposure when you just eat bananas and you eat food and you sleep next to your partner and you fly up in an airplane, right? And, and if you go to outer space, but, you know, many of you hopefully are not going into outer space that are watching this. But these are all things that increase your radiation exposure. So just be aware of that and try and do those things to limit those, okay? So number six, we'll make sure you can see this. That is eating and consuming vegetables slash produce. So there's a little bit of confusion regarding this topic because a lot of people will think that certain vegetables, especially cruciferous vegetables like kale and so on, they're actually potentially harmful to your thyroid because they contain things called goitrogens. Now I'm telling you that even if that is true, and it, it's probably very minimal if it exists at all, again, it's a whole nother topic, um, the goitrogenic, goitrogenic effect of vegetables on your thyroid gland is probably minuscule. But what we do know is that if you consume a lot of vegetables and a lot of produce, that can actually drop the size and potentially treat your thyroid nodules. So if you haven't, now's the time. Start pounding down those vegetables, get all the produce that you can, preferably organic, but even if it isn't organic, that's still okay um, because you want to be getting those things in your body because of their, you know, the beneficial effects in the plants will reduce inflammation, may actually help treat insulin resistance, may reduce inflammation from an autoimmune component. So just eating diet in general is very, a very good idea if you have, um, or eating a healthy diet in general is a good idea if you have thyroid nodules. So don't forget the vegetables slash produce. Now, within each of these, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different treatments that you could go into. Um, so I haven't included all those things, but again, I have videos on each of these topics individually, but I want to give you sort of a high level view so you can understand what things you can do for thyroid nodules. Now, I will tell you this too. Most doctors don't even offer treatment for thyroid nodules. As far as they're concerned, thyroid nodules are just something to be watched. You just check them with ultrasound. You check them every six months to a year, depending on their size. You poke a needle in them if you need to, to get biopsy and uh, some tissues to see if they're cancerous and they're going to call it a day. So it's up to you to pay attention to these things that I'm telling you right now, because again, they're not going to be doing this because that's just not how they're taught. But each of these things does have some, some literature and some data supporting its use. Now I want to hear from you. If you have thyroid nodules, leave them in the comments below, because like I said, it's very common. Um, depends on your age, the higher, the older you are, the more likely you are to have these things. But if you have it, leave it in the comments below, just share your experience about your thyroid nodule. If you haven't already, be sure to also download my free thyroid PDF resources. I'll have a link to those below as well so that you can, you can take advantage of those. I have things like foods to eat if you have thyroid problems, clinical studies to take to your thyroid or clinical studies to take to your doctor and so on. Tons and tons of information for thyroid patients. So make sure you download those. And uh, that's all I have for you today. So otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one.